Okay, so we've got the rough opening, pan flash and everything, so the next step is going to be setting the window. A couple of steps that we want to point out before we actually get all the way into just setting into the opening. First of all, most manufacturers recommend that you shim up the window from the bottom to uh, get it out of this pan, because after all, the bottom of it is going to be sitting in this area that collects water. So what we're using, in our case, is just about a quarter inch thick strip of Azec, which is basically a foamed polyvinyl chloride product or some other type of plastic. The important points to remember for these shims is that they should be flat, if you have a flat sill, sill pan, because you don't want your window tilting outwards, and also non-compressible and preferably non-organic. So for instance, a, sheeter, a cedar shim fails all of these tests. It's beveled, it's organic, and it's soft enough that it compresses. Another detail we want to look at is at the sill of the, the bottom of the window. You'll notice that we saw before that we have that preform pan flashing. This with it has a back dam so the problem is is that back dam is going to kick up and we want to make sure that we're clear of that so we cut a little relief kerf at about three and five eighths and if we go back to the window we'll see that that's about where that kerf is at so i think we're about ready to set this window so alex you want to give me a hand give me a hand Okay, rotate for you. Okay, I got my side. You see we're lifting up the flap of the house wrap to, to let that drain onto it. Okay, I got it. Alex, if you want to step inside. Okay, we're going to need to make sure that those shims are underneath the jam pieces. Do you want me, do you want me to... Okay. Down. Down. And also make sure that it's roughly centered in the opening. Okay, you got it? Okay, I'm just going to tack a nail in to keep it in place, and then we'll deal with uh, straightening and plumbing the window. So on the inside of the window, you can see how the window is seated on that, that AZEC piece. It's inside the back dam of that pan flashing, and you can see the kerf that we've made there the, the, uh, that allows the back dam to stand up. See the windows uh, centered in that opening. Okay, so the normal procedure for a window is this point, once you have it temporarily tacked in, you do stuff like make sure it's square in the opening, plumb level, and also that the jams are straight so that you're not, uh, it's not going to get screwed up in terms of opening and closing. However, we're doing this in a demo wall that's not actually square, uh, square plumb or level, so that's kind of pointless. But the least we're going to do is make sure that the jams are straight before we nail it off. Then we're just, uh, so we're just going to fire off a nail into about every other hole. Okay, next we want to talk about some of the details on how we're flashing the window into the opening. First, let's take a look over at the water, water management guide details. So, you normally set the window into the opening, and we're going to be doing flashing tape first at the sides, the jams, and then lastly over at the head, overlapping the two so it drains down, and then that flap that we cut earlier will lap down over the top, the head tape. Uh, if we go back to the window for a second, one of the things that they mentioned in the water management guide is whether or not to caulk the flanges of the windows. It might be a good idea in some cases. Uh, what you, it's called a bedding caulk bead that would run along the sides and then across the top and down the other side. Is it actually that necessary? Maybe, maybe not. For one, we're putting this pretty good water seal layer over at the face of the flange to cover it all up. Uh, second of all, in terms of the air seal, we are doing some low expansion foam from the inside to take care of that joint. One place where you should not put caulk in definitely is the bottom of the pan flashing. Because basically the concept is, if or rather when the window leaks, it'll leak into the pan and it has to get out of it somehow. So you don't want to seal that water in. Um, in terms of wind-driven rain getting under there, sure it can get driven, but it's a pan that's meant to store and then release that water. It has that back dam to prevent it from getting in further. And uh, as a last thing, it's also air sealed, so hopefully it'll basically behave like an open cup. Wind-driven rain will enter it, but then go right out as opposed to getting driven to the inside. So I think the next step 
Oh yeah, one last thing about caulk. If you are doing that caulk step, make sure that those two materials are chemically compatible. Uh, for instance, like a high VOC caulk might cause damage to a plastic-based house wrap. You can usually tell that pretty quickly by putting a sample on and leaving it for just three days or something, and if stuff starts to fall apart and get gooey, it's a pretty sure sign that it is not chemically compatible. So I think the next step is going to be putting on the side jams tape. Uh, so we got the tape here. Uh, so we're just finishing off the other jam flashing. Just getting that down to this level. Might be worthwhile to take a second to talk about what the critical dimensions are on these flashings. So for this side jam flashing, we want to make sure we are at least start about an inch above the top of the, the head flange and at the bottom extend three inches down past the uh, bottom flange and we're going to apply that tape across the top and that should extend about two inches on each side of uh, these two jam flashings. So let's go ahead, go ahead and see if we can pop that up. As we've probably said before, the head one overlaps the side jam flashings. Water runs downhill. Actually, don't hold it quite tight. There, perfect. Okay. Hang on one second, let me adjust it. You want to take over the release paper? Sorry, point that back. Perfect. Keep going. <laughs> Good stuff. And then the flashing, the weather resistive barrier laps over that head flashing. One last bit is we're just going to tape down the corners of this flap of Tyvek of a weather resistive barrier to just keep it out of the way and down in position. You know, in terms of any critical water seals, this isn't. Ah, that's a nice job there, Coda. <laughs> Let's fix that. One side. It's the other side. Now we're ready to start putting on some foam.